difficult to draw like a histogram if you're going to do it kind of by hand. So the box and whiskers possibly uh, is, is maybe a little bit more outdated, although it's, it's still a nice visual uh, effect here. And then next time we'll get into the comparison of it and kind of like the histogram. So let's go into the box and whiskers. There we have it and boom. So now we've got this pictorial representation and I'll put it, eh, I'll just put it right here for now. Now we'll get into some more kind of idea of what exactly the box and whiskers is doing. But for now, let's format this. I'm gonna get rid of the title at least for now. So remember we can format these items. It won't, no, I messed it up. Delete the title, make it a little bit bigger. Notice if I'm off the chart, I'll try to make it a little bit bigger this way. Then I don't have those two tabs up top. If I go onto the chart, just like we saw with our bar graph, we get these two tabs up top. So with the chart design, you've got the add chart elements, you know, the axes and so on, uh, the quick layouts, you've got the color changes and whatnot that you can do to it and everything. Blue's the standard. So usually you probably want to change it from blue if you're trying to impress somebody because Otherwise they're like, yeah, you just pick the standard one <laughs> and you could change it. You could change these. This is an easy way to change it as well. Here's your data sets. So if I go into my data sets, uh, we can see the data that was pulled in. If we edit the data set, you could see the, the data set in this format that we pulled in to uh, the box and whiskers. And if you wanted to add another data set, have two on the same graph, for example, then you can add it uh, this way. That's one way that you can kind of add a data set. So, and then uh, change the type. You've got the formatting uh, up top and this gets more into like the formatting stuff, uh, the, the, uh, the the formatting selection, the, you know, the how you're gonna, the, the shape fills and all that kind of stuff within your, now this, just so you know, that gets a little bit confusing when you look at the formatting because you're like, hey, some of that stuff's kind of repeated possibly over here in the home page, but when you're working within you know a chart or a graph you're typically going to want to go to the formatting on the right hand side which is specific to it now if i click on any of these elements within it so if i if for example i have a lot of empty space back here which is kind of squishing up the box and whiskers up top so i might say hey look can i just start this thing maybe at like uh, 50 or something like that and take it up to like 85 maybe and then it'll be a, a bigger thing so one way I can do is I can I can click in here and that will give me on the right hand side if I go to the right hand side I'm on my axis so if I select the axis here so now I'm in, these are the numbers that I'm kind of working that I'm focused in on so the minimum is at 0 what if I pull that minimum up to like I don't know, like 50 so now it went from auto it didn't just auto assign it i forced it to start at 50. so now it started at 50 so we don't have all that blank space we have a little bit wider uh, of a box and then i can maybe i'll put the top at like 85 thousand and so now we have a little bit wider uh of a, of a of a pictorial representation now you have your other formatting options over here with the you know the shadow and the glow that's more kind of, of of the formatting I'm, i won't get into that in too much detail at this point uh but if you wanted to you know change some of those elements any of the elements within here you can click on these elements and again you could go into the information that is related to it in particular we also have the plus button so that gives us our axes so if we want to label the axes we probably don't need this one down here right so i could probably remove uh the one and uh, so, so this is uh, the axis title. Now on this one, I, again, I probably don't need this axis maybe, but I might want like this axis to be, you know, wages, or maybe I just put the title, you know, as wages since it's a box and whisker. And then I can, if I go into these uh, chart title, uh, data labels, this, could be helpful depending on how large the item is, right? So we can add uh, the labels to it and that can give you a sense of exactly, you know, what is going on. And then the legend, which would be applicable if you had like multiple uh, data sets that, that you were working with. So 
So that's the general idea. So next time we'll get into more detail exactly, you know, what <laughs> what this is saying, and we'll basically tie it out with some, the reason I don't want to get into it in detail now is because we, we can like do the math with it, and we can do a formula to see exactly what is going on. So we'll pick up, you know, quartile one, quartile two, the median, the average, and what the outliers uh, basically mean, and how exactly they are calculated. And once you have a sense of that then it'll be easier to kind of just intuitively look at this. Uh, however, at this point, I also just want to note that we could put multiple box and whisker charts, which might be a, a useful tool in one area. So let's go ahead. I'm going to I'm going to copy and paste the data set over here to column R and then make a simple formula just to make another data set just so we can see that what that comparison might look like. So if I go in, if I select this entire column, I'm going to put my cursor on A, so the drop down. So now the entire column all the way down is selected. I only need it down to the end of the table, but this is a way to copy the whole thing. I can right click and I can copy it. And then I'm going to move over here to column R. So I'm in column R and then I'm going to put my cursor on R1. I can't put it on R2, by the way, because if I did and I try to paste it on R2, there's not enough room because I copied the entire column, even though I only really